My name is Paul Beaver. I'm a biologist with a doctorate from the University of Chicago. I'm going to speak today about a favorite species of mine, the giant river otter. I began working in the Western Amazon forest of Peru in 1980 as a field biologist with the Chicago Zoological Society. Shortly thereafter, I started my own business, the first adventure camping company in the Amazon. I wanted to share with people the thrilling adventure I had as a field biologist in this great wilderness. At first, it was a very modest operation consisting of a boat, some tents, some machetes. But over the last four decades, my business grew into a respectable ecotourism business that has won many awards and been honored with much recognition, being named six times in National Geographic magazines as one of the best ecotourism companies in the world, and in 2019 was granted an award by the president of Peru as the most environmentally and socially responsible business in Peru. In 2007, we worked with the government to create a reserve of nearly half a million hectares in size. During my time exploring and later operating an ecotourism lodge and a research center recognized as a research institution by the scientific board of the Peruvian government, I never saw a single giant river otter, not from 1980 until about 2010. Then, all of a sudden, we were excited to see a family of giant river otters. Probably they swam into our region from a nearby reserve, the Pacaya Samiria, during the flood season. And over the last 10 years, this situation has grown to many families of giant river otters, which we frequently see. The giant river otter of South America is such a remarkable animal. It is the world's largest mustelid or weasel. It can reach a length of nearly two meters in size. That's more than twice as long as any other river otter in the world. They are found in remote tributaries of the Amazon River where they hunt for fish. They are very intelligent, vocal, and social animals. They are well adapted to an aquatic lifestyle, having webbed feet, a flipper-like tail, and dense waterproof fur made up of guard hairs, which trap moisture. Each individual has a unique pattern of white and brown colors on its throat. And when one otter encounters other otters, it sticks its neck high out of the water like a rising periscope for individual recognition. They are very noisy animals as well, with a dozen different vocalizations communicating different information. The sounds you've heard on the video indicates to other otters to pay attention to something of interest. In this case, an approaching canoe of ecotourists. 
Giant river otters live in extended family groups, usually four to eight individuals, but can be up to 20 individuals. Their social structure is highly cohesive. They sleep together, eat together, travel together, and play together. They are active during the day and sleep in dens at night. The young are born very dependent and do not even open their eyes until more than a month after birth. They are dependent on milk from the mother and later fish caught by adults until they reach about a year old. Because of its large size and large canine teeth, it has no natural predator other than humans. Their meat is not tasty, but their skin is velvety smooth and waterproof. And for this, they were extensively hunted during the 20th century. By 1999, their total population throughout the Amazon basin was thought to be less than 5,000 individuals and they were then listed as an endangered species. Trade in articles of clothing made from their skin became illegal and hunting for this reason declined. But the population of giant river otters has not recovered and in fact is still in decline in the Amazon forest. They are still killed by local fishermen who see them as a competitor for fish and accuse them of chewing through fishing nets to get to food destroying the net. And they are often trapped and die in larger nets. So they remain one of the rarest mammals in the world and in danger of extinction. Based on our experience, one thing that may help in this species recovery is ecotourism, if done correctly. By correctly, that would be tourism that only views the otters at a distance does not pursue the otters, does not frighten them, does not disturb their dens, and so forth. They are such a delightful animal for ecotourists to see at a safe distance. They are playful, curious, athletically nimble in the water. The adults are often seen playing with the young, and curious otters may even approach canoes and boats when they do not feel threatened. It is our hope in the Amazon that ecotourism will help to save the giant river otter, much as ecotourism in tropical Africa has helped to save the mountain gorilla, and ecotourism in Asia has helped to save the tiger. For years, we've worked closely with the communities downriver from the reserve, encouraging and teaching the long-term benefits of conservation versus the short-term gains of hunting. For example, instead of hunting, we have a program where we pay the locals to collaborate with us, helping to build trails, track wildlife, work in maintenance and construction, work as assistance to guides, and help to do wildlife inventories. It took years of our presence in the communities, helping with the economics, healthcare, and education of the communities to maintain this partnership and build trust with the local indigenous communities. However, in the end, all of this work, all of this investment paid off as we were finally able to end the hunting of river otters, as well as monkeys, jaguars and other animals in the Tawaiyo River Basin. Thank you for your attendance today at this event.